Happy New Year, everybody. It's great to see you. And that, the song, that song, and the angels were just moving to. There's a lot of activity. I just sense that. <laughs> Let's ask God to speak to us. Lord Christ, you are the great I am. You said I am the way, the truth, the life. You said I'm the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end. You said I, I am the door for the sheep. And you said I'm the bread of life. And, and you also said before Abraham was, I am. So Father, as we begin a new year, this is filled with opportunity to trust you, to learn what a biblical faith is and to encounter uh, the living God. And not just thoughts about God, but face to face in the presence of a holy God. And we ask it in Jesus' name that we would see him and him only. Amen. I wish I could have more faith. Have you ever said that? Or, I wish I could have the faith of so-and-so. I feel like my faith is so small and undeveloped. By the way, if you've said that, you're in a good place. That's a place of humility. But I know a lot of people that really want to have more faith. The question is, what is faith? Faith is a very popular topic. You know that uh, the third best-selling song of all time by a group that uh, I kind of grew up loving, Journey, yeah? Don't Stop Believing, Hang On To That Feeling. Yeah, third best-selling song of all time. And it's a great song. It just has nothing to do with biblical faith. I, I have a friend of mine who's a financial genius. He really has made a lot of money. And uh, he's a new ager, without getting too technical, that comes out of Eastern religion, which comes out of an impersonal God. There's energy, there's cosmic energy, and the cosmos is God, and all things are God. Too technical, I know, but they believe that. And he always says about faith to his listeners on his radio show, he says, I'm sending you some white light. You see? That's how they understand it. Some white light, some cosmic energy for healing, for healing, for healing. The, the universe is impersonal now. We believe in an infinite personal God. And... Uh, Faith has nothing to do with you and everything to do with God. It doesn't come from trying harder. It doesn't come from gritting your teeth. It doesn't come from saying, man, I didn't have enough faith. So-and-so died. It comes from knowing who God is as He reveals Himself through the Gospel and as He shows you the one who is trustworthy. So for five weeks, we're going to go through Hebrews 11 and part of 12. My series is entitled faith for a new year. Let's stand for the Word of God. Seven verses from Hebrews 11, and we're just going to scratch the surface of this magnificent section, which is often called the faith chapter, also called God's Hall of Fame, the Word of the Lord. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, for by it, the people of old receive their commendation. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the Word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous, God commending him by accepting his gifts. And through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death. And he was not found because God had taken him. Now before he was taken, he was commended as having pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear, constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this he condemned the world, 
and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Again, I want to encourage you, if you're new to the Bible, step by step by step, you will see as Christ is revealed in His Word, the glory of God. I mean, there's five hours of sermon there. By the grace of God, may we just have a shorter one than that. But here's what I want to tell you. This first principle is counterintuitive. I use that a lot with you. It means it doesn't make sense from a human perspective coming at it from the natural self. Put it up. Here it is. Faith is confidence and conviction about things we cannot see. Faith is not conjuring up energy to try to believe something I don't really know if is true. Faith is based on the revelation of God who in His Word shows us in a way that we can understand who He is. And through the infinite galaxies and the universe gives us an indication of what a majestic artist He is. Now that's something to think about. It's very counterintuitive. If you ask most people in Denver, they'll say, uh, faith is just whatever you believe about God and that works for you. Whatever gets you through the night is all right. I challenge that. I challenge that. Because the Bible is making some astounding statements here. Now, when we speak about the unseen in a postmodern, post-scientific world, we, we, oh, like people get nervous. Like, what are you talking about? Is this like Star Wars? No. This is something that is much, much more profound than that. Let me just break it down for you a little bit here. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for. And that word assurance really doesn't capture all of it. You don't have to know Greek to go to heaven, thank God. But the word is hypostasis. It's the word that we use for perseverance. It literally means to stay under and in a situation, to hang in there and life, knowing that God has placed me there. And in the midst of the struggle of life, you get stronger even though you feel weaker. It's the word and the description that we use for a workout. If you've ever had a great trainer, and I told you I don't like trainers because they make me work too hard. I like to be my own trainer because it's a much wimpier workout but the spotter says five more reps right okay i gotta watch my right knee here it's doing good by the way i'm on my left knee see but i can't do five more no i'll spot you i'll spot you stay there wear your arms out a little more persevere and you will go stronger that's the word but it's also a word that has to do with a foundation you build a deck in your home and that foundation had better be solid Without that foundation, it's going to erode. It's what holds you together when you can't see anything else in life. You're falling apart, but you've got a foundation. Okay, call it an anchor, if you will. It's the thing that I know holds me together, and it is based not on me, but on God revealing Himself. Assurance, yeah, that's the English word. But it's foundational. Everything in life, when the blizzard is so intense that you can't see beyond your nose. You say, I'm, I have a foundation. I don't know where I'm going. I'm bumping into walls. I'm bumping into people. I'm bumping into myself. I have an assurance. Now that's very different than don't stop believing. Hang into that feeling. It's the assurance of things hoped for that I look ahead knowing that God is going to work this out. But it's also fascinating. It's the conviction of things not seen. Now, conviction is a powerful word. We don't use it a whole lot. I have a real conviction about that. Or if God's working on your life, what do we say? Man, that kind of convicted me, bugged me. Ouch. Ooh, i got to watch that. But this is a word that really means proof. Oh, Proof about God? That's ridiculous. It means that there's something that God has shown a believer that is, first of all, foundational. No matter what happens, I stand on this. But it's also an evidence, it's proof 
of things not seen. Now, we believe now that Jesus Christ is the Lord and we have not seen Him physically. But those here who are Christians, little Christ, Luther, in Christ, have come to see Jesus. We await the day when we will see Him face to face. And we shall see Him as He is and we will be like Him. But many in this room have come to know and see Jesus Christ. And here's where our atheist friends really struggle here. And yes, atheist friends, there are other sheep that are not yet of this fold. Howard Stern calls what? There you go again, Pastor Doug, your imaginary friend. Can't see him, and you might as well call him Linus. Snoopy, no? No, this God has a name. And this God has a character. This God has a personality. And this God has come and revealed himself. And right now, I do not know God through blind faith. This God has shown me through my understanding, through my observation of the universe, through my knowledge of how he validates who he is through scripture, but hold up in any court. And here's the key thing, how he has come to show me his love in a personal way. And Jesus Christ keeps popping up all over the world, revealing himself to people. Our God's on the loose. He's alive. The song by the newsboys, huh? Our God's not dead. He's surely alive. So it's the, it is the, it's the evidence. It's the root. It is the hope. It is the absolute proof, if you will, of things not seen. For by it, the people of old received their commendation. That's a hard translation. The, the word literally is martyr. And the word in the Greek for martyr means witness. Isn't that fascinating? The early believers were martyrs, but they were also witnesses of His glory. But it goes deeper in context here. When when it says about commendation, it's not speaking about how you earn your way to God. It's simply saying that walking with God will always have to be done by faith. And at the end of your life, you will leave behind a legacy. You will leave behind not just a memory, much deeper, a legacy. And at the end of life, no matter what you have to face, God will say, wow, what a life of faith you have lived. This isn't to earn salvation. We'll talk about saving faith. But this is our response to God. God says, what to our faith? I love it. Now, I've said many times to you that your, I was going to say your sins are no big deal, but they are. But they're taken care of in Christ. God doesn't have trouble dealing with your sins. Yes, it breaks his heart, and more importantly, it hurts you. Makes you less of the person God's called you to be. Me too. But Christ has made full provision for our sin. What breaks the heart of God is our unbelief, our inability to trust him. That's why Jesus, what? Marveled at the faith of the centurion. He said, never in Israel have I seen such faith. And he was grieved over and over again in his own hometown. So there's something about the greatest gift we give to God that is our willingness to trust. And what's the most harmful thing we can say to one another? I I said this earlier today, I'll say it again. I mean, as a pastor, I hope you like me. That's one of our weaknesses as pastors. I don't know if Sam can relate to that or not because he's liked by everybody as a youth pastor. But a lot of pastors like to be liked, but that's really irrelevant. It really doesn't matter whether you like me. I'll seek to love you because of Christ. But if you said to me, I don't trust a word you say. I can't believe anything you say. I don't trust you as a core of a human being. Whew. Throw me in a grave. There's nothing about you I can trust, Doug. That's what we do to God. You see? You see the difference? God, your name's holy, you're glorious, but I really don't trust you with my life. You're going to make a mess out of my life. I know better with my life than you do. And faith, a lack of faith, cynicism, apathy, 
breaks the heart of God. So this first principle is foundational for the rest of your life. Yes, this year, and you'll do it week by week, day by day. Faith is confidence and conviction about things we cannot see. But look what else it says here in verse 2. If you could put that up, please. Verse 3, Nathan, I'm sorry. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the Word of God, okay? It's, it's personal. That's huge. That is huge. We could spend hours on it, but I want you to see that. It's not just cosmic energy and dust, and the universe is not God. It was created by a personal, infinite personal God called the Word of God, whom we know as Jesus. So that what is faith, what is seen, was not made out of things that are visible. God is distinct from creation. The visible universe with all its spectacular glory is a reminder of the amazing artist that we know as our God. Do you see that? And so here's the thing I want you to see before we move ahead. We understand creation by understanding the nature of God. Created by a personal God who is the living word and we have come to experience that word. Look around you. Look at the human mind. See the spectacular glory of a baby. See the amazing things that God has done. And realize what an artist He is. The writer of Hebrews is saying the visible constantly points us to the invisible. Sounds like a mind game. But what he's saying is very profound. Let me go back. Our faith in the invisible comes from God's work in the visible. Put it as simply as I can. We worship and confess a God with footsteps. A God who has come into our world and has chosen to validate himself and his credentials through the fulfillment of prophecy. This is the God who has left footprints. Not just out there, not just out there. He keeps popping up, but all over the world he continues to make himself known. I thought it was an interesting story. We have a food ministry that goes on every week, and uh, we have people from many, many nations that come here for food. And it is uh, sponsored by our Spanish church, our Shekinah church. And this past week, and they don't force people to come to worship to give them food, but they invite them. Many do, many don't. And many people don't speak Spanish or English, and that can be a challenge. And so this past week, we have a, a large group of Iraqis, as well as Iranians in Denver. You know, we have an Iranian church here. But there's a large group of Iraqis and a number of them come to the food ministry because it's a very practical help for people in this area, getting fresh produce and other things. And so this particular week, two Iraqi ladies um, came to the worship service and listened to a message that made no sense to them because they speak only Arabic. But here's what happened. The message from the Spanish is interpreted into English. And out of the English, a little 12-year-old girl who just so happened to be there, who happens to speak Arabic, went over to these two ladies and began to translate into Arabic. Now, normally we would not have an Arabic translator there. The two ladies, who are of course Muslim, heard the word of God and gave their lives to Jesus Christ. Now, I have to tell you, now what chance is there of that happening? I don't provide Arabic translators. It's hard enough trying to understand me, you know, English to English here. Yeah, I'll speak Arabic. You say, well, that's just coincidence. No, they heard about a God who had come to them in Jesus Christ and what he meant, and they said, I want to know that Jesus. And God used a 12-year-old girl out of nowhere who speaks English and Arabic and not Spanish and was able to bring her the message. Okay, that's wild, isn't it? But my point is, 
That is a God who makes himself known. And, and why doesn't he do that to all people at all times? There's a mystery here. There's a beauty, but there's a mystery about salvation. A God with footsteps who has come to me to save me and to reveal to me glory. Now we're going to build on that with the text here. But here's the, here's the essence of this first principle before I move on. Confidence and conviction move me to hang in there and wait and trust a God that I cannot see who has come and gave me full assurance that I belong to Him. The more I know about this God and what He has done, the more I will stop fighting Him. Or, as the Bible verse says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You don't try harder. You don't say, my friends have more faith. I wish I could believe that thing. I'd like to have a faith too. I'd like to know a God. Faith comes by hearing as God speaks and you hear His Word and you get to know His voice. He's a God with a personal quality and attribute as well as being infinite and powerful and holy. Do you see what I'm saying? Conviction, foundation, in the midst of a time when I can figure out what he's doing. So what's this commendation again? And we're going to build on that with the second and third principle. The best gift you will give to God is say, okay, I trust you. I don't understand. And those of you that have not come to know God through Jesus Christ, saving faith begins it all by saying, Lord, I can't figure it out, but I need you. And I, I believe that you're real. I'm not sure. But I want you to come and save me and live in me. And I want to know you. It begins. And then from that point on, the commendation is not, hey, you know, I gave a lot of money to the church. Da, 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 da. That, is, that is an act of faith. The commendation is, you know what? When everything was going wrong, I said, God, thank you. I will trust you. Tim Keller talked this past week about two types of faith, or doubt, excuse me. He talked about the beauty of doubt. How's that for a thing? And it was reminding me of our Christmas discussion on Zachariah and Mary. Yeah, we can talk about Christmas. Is that all right? Yeah? Okay, whatever. And um, he said, you know, there's two types of doubt. One is more Zachariah doubt that says, what? I don't think so. Really? How's that going to be? How are you going to know God? How are you going to say all this stuff about God? My atheist buddies say that all the time. How do you talk like you actually know this stuff is true? How, really? How are you going to know that? I don't think so. Well, that's a doubt of unbelief. Mary's doubt was, wasn't really doubt at all, but I still doubt. How can it be, Lord? I'm going to wait and see. Wow. I have no clue how God is going to work this out. I have no clue, but I can't wait to see. You see the difference? My life is a mess, but wait and see what he does with it. Whew. My kids, woo! See what I'm saying? Wait till you see what God does. I, I can't figure out how he's going to do it. You see that? But I'm believing in what he's going to do. We have at our first service, you know, uh, I just want to share this. This is about faith. Some wonderful African families. We're going to have our first African elder, which we've been praying about for quite a few years, from Malawi. And we feel like um, the 11 or 12 nations that are gathered at our first service is a mini expression of the kingdom. And uh, we have a number of Nigerians, as some of you know. And um, one of them finally got his wife moved here. It's very difficult. They come here as the first representative of the family, and it takes sometimes years to get the rest of the family here. And his, his name is Samuel. Many of you met him. His wife, Elizabeth. And um, there was another Nigerian lady who just had a baby on Christmas Eve. And um, she's a very sick woman, and she has all kinds of issues. And she can't raise this baby. So I find out Samuel, who's got to be close to my age, and his wife Elizabeth said, we're going to trust God and we're going to raise this baby. 
and I met her this morning. Him, him, him. His name is Emmanuel. Isn't that beautiful? You'll say, well, what does that have to do with faith? Oh, yeah, have you ever raised a kid in your 50s? Are you kidding me? Without much money? With a real low standard of existence? But they said, we, please hear this, we are going to trust God to do the impossible. And we're going to step out in faith. Wow. Why do you do something like that? Well, because I have a foundation in the living God. And not only a foundation, I have an evidence by how God has revealed himself that he's going to come through for me. And my commendation, not earning my salvation, but the way God says wow to your life is that I will trust him no matter what. Amen? All right. That's just the first principle. I, I, that's a lot there, okay? And you may have to watch the webcast and get it. Because I have to hear a sermon three times before I get it. I'm really serious. I have to study this passage 30 times before I get it. Now, you're way ahead of me, a lot of you. But I'm telling you, it takes time for me to absorb this stuff. It's like eating a wonderful piece of meat. I've got to chew it, chew it, and chew it more carefully. Second principle, Nathan. Faith is an offering of my heart with an attitude. <laughs> it sure is. It's, it's that two types of belief or doubt. What do you really feel towards God? Look at verse 4 and verse 5. By faith, Abel, this is Genesis 4, by the way, if you're new to the Bible, offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous, God commending him, same word there, well done, good legacy, by accepting his gifts. And through his faith, he, though he died, he still speaks. Now, if you're not familiar with the story, it's a real bad uh, brother relationship. If you think you have boys that fight, I know none of your kids have ever fought, all right. We had two boys. Oh, boy, it was like World War III at times. That's normal. But this was worse. Cain killed Abel. He was jealous. And they both had offerings. And it's real, you know, and that's a separate sermon. I, I'm giving you that. I'm just telling you why it's here. Um, it's fascinating to note that Abel, his offering was the first fruit he gave, the very best to God. He wanted to present to God the very best he had. Abel did not. Abel was jealous of his brother. Other way around, Cain misspoke, misspoke. Cain, and they... It's had this horrible thing, but before that happens, just a brief little thing out about it, God warned, warned Cain about the horrible place his heart was at. And he said, sin is crouching at your door. He warned him before the murder took place. By the way, when we speak about the line of evil, we speak about the line of Cain. And his attitude was to God <sighs> not about how much money you give. Your offering to God is your life, your living sacrifice. And the best part of that offering is, will you trust God as the great and glorious God who has come to take you as his own? Now, my answer with you is not very well. That's why we need each other. Not very well. That's why I need the word of God. That's why I come. That's why I learn. That's why I grow. I don't do this very well naturally, but my offering to God is going to be faith. It is faith in the living God. It is faith in Christ Himself. It is not faith in faith. It is not faith in energy. It is an offering that I give back to God. I, this makes no sense. No sense. No sense. But I trust you. And I know that you will make good. I can't see my way out of this on my own. Remember when we talked about Mary's faith? She said what? My soul what? Magnifies the Lord. My soul rejoices in God my Savior. In other words, God becomes bigger as I make myself smaller. I'm not constantly obsessed with me, me, me. I'm beginning to see the glory of God. And by the way, whenever Christ is preached, His glory is revealed. And when we worship Him in glory. God creates faith. God sustains faith. And what I do is offer up an offering of my faith to God. Now, when will that take place? You know, I, I had a little expression I used years ago. It, it really wasn't meant to be cute. I used to always say, temptation isn't temptation if it isn't temptation. 
In other words, I used to say I'm not tempted by broccoli. Everybody get that, you know? Oh, don't put that broccoli that's on my office. I'm just going to eat it all day, you know? <laughs> no, you do too many dark chocolates, then I look... <sighs> temptation is real. It's powerful. If it's not temptation, it's not temptation. You say, boy, what a cyclical argument that is. You know temptation when you see it. It's powerful. You say, yes, wait a minute. But faith isn't faith if it's not faith. If everything you can see, everything, and you got it all figured out, I'm telling you, God's going to take you in uncharted waters. You know, well, I got my life figured out. I, I, know, I know exactly what I'm going to do, how much money I'm going to make. I know who I'm going to marry. I know whom I have married. I know what my kids are going to do with their life. Yeah, I got it worked out, really. That's not faith. That's not faith. It's not faith. Some people ask, well, how's Faith Church going to support seven or eight churches here? I lose track. Most, some of the poorest groups in the city and a Shekinah Spanish church and an Iranian church and a wonderful Bhutan refugee church where there's now 200 new believers and, uh, and two Ethiopian churches. And, and, how, and they say, how are you going to do that? How are you going to do that? You know what I say? I have no clue. I just know God is going to honor his kingdom and his word and somehow my God will make a way. Really? You think I have this stuff figured out when I wake up in the morning? We may go bankrupt, we'll start again. Our God will sustain. That's biblical faith. Especially when you honor the kingdom and you honor the poor. All right. It's an offering of my heart. God, my attitude is such that I can't figure you out, but I will love you, I will glorify you, and I will trust you. All right, that's the second principle. Now the third, we're going to see the gospel in this seventh verse. Faith is a gift of God that we give back to him every day. I'll show you verse six. And this is one of the most important verses in all of Scripture. All of Scripture is important because it's inspired by God. But this is a powerful verse. Verse 6, there it is. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who seek Him. Now, I gotta, I gotta say, you be careful with this because if you want to distort Scripture, you can go wild here. First of all, it doesn't mean you must believe that he exists like the majority of Americans believe that there's a God. So what? The devil believes too. All the demons believe. This is a belief that he exists of a little kid that's playing with dad or mom and says, if I jump off of here, will you catch me? This is little Liam coming up knowing. By the way, Liam, you're not supposed to interrupt music by mom, you know? Come on, doesn't matter. I know mom will receive me. She's so thrilled. That was a beautiful biblical parallel. She is so thrilled that you come to me at any moment. I'm never too busy for you. Thank you for the sermon. And so that's what it is. I'm going to jump off and someone's going to catch me. And this isn't jumping off and gritting. I wonder if there's a God. I know that my God will catch me. Faith means to put your weight down. Sit on a chair. And you put everything on it. It's not talking about whether you will ever get on an airplane and fly. It's flying on the plane. That's what faith is. And it literally means, though it's impossible to please God without faith that He actually exists. Doesn't mean, yeah, maybe, nice thought. Maybe there's a God. Maybe No, no, no. If God doesn't come through in my life, I'm in big trouble. Hmm. How many churches really live that? No, we don't either. So, Dare I be self-righteous with you? But really, we do what's comfortable. But if God doesn't come through, I'm in big trouble. That he what? Must believe that he exists. He's real. And that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. With what? Well, health and wealth people go crazy with this text. <laughs> He'll get you a Cadillac if you believe him. That's never mind. No. He'll give you 
his very best. Now, most of us don't really believe that God will give us his best. I better, I better sit in God's chair because he's too slow in my life. Ah, but God gives you his presence. He gives you his glory. He gives you everything, as you'll see in a sense. He makes you a co-heir of Jesus Christ. He makes your life explode with a joy that you can never create on your own. Those who want to please God must act like he exists and that he blesses those who seek him earnestly. Now, now it's not just blindness. Now, we're almost done here, so. Those who seek him, and many of you are seeking him this morning. By faith, Noah, being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear, constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. Now, there's a lot there. But what is it saying? You'd have to be a nut back in those days to hang out with Noah. It was as dry as Arizona. He, the weird religious guy, is building a boat. You know, everybody knows about Noah now. Noah's cool. But back then, are you an idiot, Noah? Why don't you go build something that's a little more practical? Because the living God has told me that his word is to be obeyed. And it says here, it's kind of a tongue-in-cheek, says, in reverent fear. In other words, I trust God more than I do the laughter of people around me because I know his character. Like the Apostle Paul, I know whom I have believed. And I know that he is able to save me on that day. He's a personal God. And then it says here, he condemned the world. That's odd language. But it simply means, that the best way for me to put it to you on a Sunday morning is, he said, fooey, fooey, fooey. Go laugh at me. doesn't really matter. He didn't say a condemnation of the world for whom Christ died. It's just saying, yeah, you can call me nuts. You can call me crazy. But I have to tell you, I will obey God even if the rest of the world laughs at me. And by the way, the only place to be was on that ark. The ark is a picture of the church. How so, you say? It was a place of salvation. It's a place of protection. It's a refuge. And it stinks at times. You hear the last part? Churches stink at times. Why? Because they're made up of people like us. It's a place to discover the renewal of God. Now, one other thing. I don't know how in the world, I mean, this I do know because God's word is inspired, but it, this is the language of the Apostle Paul to describe knowing Jesus through salvation. This is what happens when you trust in Christ. He said, Noah became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. He's saying that he received, as an Old Testament believer, before it happened, before Christ ever came into the world, he received the fullness of salvation by trusting in the promises yet to come. And what did he become? An heir of a righteousness that has nothing to do with me, not religion, not trying harder, not treating people better and trying to break my own addictions on my own power, a righteousness that comes by faith, just like faith comes from God and I exercise it every day. This is a righteousness that comes from Him. And in order to get that righteousness, you have to realize that Jesus Christ, the heir of glory, the co-heir of God, who was with God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, true royalty had to give that up in a moment of horrible, horrible sacrifice and darkness and pain and say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He gave that up so that you, by receiving his finished work, could know and be a co-heir of Christ. And although your life is like mine, a mess, you would possess a righteousness that comes through faith in Jesus Christ alone. So I don't have any faith in faith. I don't have faith in my ability to trust. My faith is in the one who's come for me, who's made himself known, and has taken me as his child. And 
Here's the cool part. Everything that Christ has achieved in terms of royalty, glory, his kingdom, the future, I deserve none of it. But in Jesus Christ, I receive all of it. So during the hardest times of life, I'm willing to trust a God who has given me everything. Let's pray. Father God, thank you that the word became flesh and dwelt among us because we need to see and understand and in our life, which is all about me and our condition of our soul, that you came for us. And thank you that the very one, the word of God, who created the infinite galaxies, the heavens, the earth, created the human mind, created the ability to compose and write. And that's just a drop in the bucket, oh God. That you have come to us to take us as your own so that we could call you daddy. So Father, faith is a gift that you give us. We give it back every day, yes. And there may be some here that are either watching on, online or here this morning that have never personally given their heart to Jesus Christ. And if you would pray this prayer, Lord Jesus Christ, I can't understand this on my own. I came here not even sure if you were real. But by your Holy Spirit, you are speaking to me. I confess my sin and my brokenness, my meism, and I accept the amazing thing that Christ did for me. And, he, and I receive the righteousness by faith that I have nothing to do with, but I receive as a gift of God. And I invite you to take over my life, to change my name to Christian. Christian. If you prayed that prayer, you, you've understood the gospel and you've entered the kingdom of God. Please let someone know. If you're not quite there yet, continue to come and listen to the word of God because it raises the dead. And for those of us who name the name of Christ, Father, our faith is probably one-tenth the size of a mustard seed. That we would ask that you would Help us to get to know you in such a way by spending time with you that our faith would grow in you, not in our feelings. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. It's very special on the uh, first day of the new year, first Sunday of the new year, excuse me, that um, we participate every first Sunday in the Lord's Supper those of you that are not sure about who God is or listening or interested, I just ask you to wait. And we don't do this row by row because it's not something, any pressure. The, the Lord's Supper was given to us as a sign, a seal, like a wedding ring. But it's, it's a sign God knows that we need reminders, reminders of who He is. And so He's given us the sacrament as a sign and a seal of a inward grace of what he's done in our hearts. And, and God reveals himself through his proclaimed word, what we just heard this morning. But he also reveals his healing, his mercy through the sacrament. And as we come to him,